Why do we cry? Our tears a window to some depths that we ourselves don't know. I almost want to make fun of myself for that question, but you do talk seriously about crying in the book. In fact, the whole first chapter really, really tussles with crying as a, as why do we do it? What does it mean? Why is it involuntary? It seems like a weakness, right? It's because it's so involuntary and it's reflecting something true and inside at the level of the individual, that seems like a problem, right? Wouldn't it be better if we could control it? If we, if we could not show that emotion when it's not useful, show it when it's useful, but it's not, it's, it's it largely involuntary. And so there's a value to it, I think, as, a, as an honest reporter of uh, a need, of, of hope and frailty at the same time. I, I'm a human being, uh, there's a, a, frail, a frailty to myself or my situation where I need social help, I need help from my community. I have hope that that is possible, uh, but I'm not enough for myself. I need the community. That, that I think, is what the, the social signal of, of crying is. Now, people have studied crying. Uh, it's an extreme, you can, you can quantify the extent to which the presence of tears on a face triggers reactions in onlookers. And, and you can show the same face in the presence or absence of tears and show that to, to people under quantifiable and rigorous uh, you know, uh, psychological conditions. And tears are much more powerful at stirring the desire to help in viewers than any other facial uh, feature. Which is pretty interesting that it's the, it's the honest one that's also the most powerful, right? It, it kind of indicates there's a certain logic to our design at, as social beings that we have an honest report. <laughs> that's hard to, uh, hard to control. And, yeah. But is, is, it, is it well understood what, how that connects to the internal state of emotion? Yeah, there are long range projections that come. So where, where is crying generated? This is the confusing thing about it. So that we have a, a little tear duct, the lacrimal gland that leads to the release of fluid. It ejects fluid and, uh, and it comes out. And those, of course, that whole system was designed to keep the eye clean, to, to wash out particulate irritants. So it's it's a long standing. As long as we've had eyes and have been out of the water uh, in our evolution, we've needed this sort of thing. So long standing biological structure, recently co opted, it seems, by our evolution as social uh, primates. Now, how could that happen? Well, the lacrimal gland is controlled by structures in the pons, which is a structure deep in our. Uh, just above our neck, between our neck and our head, and reflecting its ancient uh, origin, right? As you go farther down toward the spinal cord, these are the more basic, early evolved structures. And, and in the pons, that's where breathing is controlled, tear uh, duct uh, contraction. And what we found, and with optogenetics, we helped uh, sort this out, there are long-range projections from fear and anxiety regions in the forebrain that project all the way to the ponds in and around those areas. The reason those are there, we think, is to regulate the respiratory rate changes, the breathing changes of fear and anxiety. So we know when we're in a state of fear and anxiety, we need, we cope better if we have elevated heart rate, elevated respiratory rate, more blood pumping around, more oxygenated blood. We're ready to meet the threat if it happens. All those cells are down there in the ponds too, right next to the lacrimal gluck duct the tear gland neurons. And so almost certainly this fear, anxiety induced crying arose from a very slightly misdirected long range projection that was there to regulate breathing yeah. and a little twist, just a little misdirection, a little missing of one signpost to yeah. stop here, going on a little farther, getting to the lacrimal gland neurons gave us crying. And that's, and we just have it, that, that peculiar sort of structure, neuronal structure that resulted in that, that's, that's, that's what we're stuck with. Yeah. And then and ends up being, in terms of social interaction, one of the more important, uh, authentic, involuntary displays of inner state. That's right. And social communication. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is there other stuff like that? I mean, do you... Uh, yeah, I mean, the human face is fascinating as a display of emotion, as a display of a 
truth and lying and all those kinds of things. I personally, I mean, we're all, I suppose, have different uh, sensors that are sensitive to certain aspects of the human face. But to me, it seems like uh, the eyes are really important communication or something. You know, I've talked to a few sort of girls about like Botox and stuff like that. Mm. And it always bothers me when, I guess guys can do this too, but like when women um, speak negatively of, I guess you can call them wrinkles yeah. at the uh, at the tips of, of an eye. But like to me, when you smile, when you wink, not wink, but like narrow the eyes to communicate, something is communicated and, and those, that stuff is really useful, <laughs> the it human is. face. It and is. when it's gone, there's something is missing. And a lot of little stuff, it feels like can really, it's almost involuntary, I guess, but it's harder to describe as the presence or absence of tears. It's like something about this person, you can tell they're not bullshitting you. Yeah, yeah. And so that was that was what made presumably that that tier recruitment so powerful is it just landed in this very high value real estate for social communication. If it had gone to, you know, there's a lot of neurons in the in the ponds that control, you know, movement of of large, you know, muscles, uh, you know, elsewhere. That would have been much less effective as a social signal than something around the eye. So it was, however that that little misdirection happened, it it landed in a great area for social communication. And because it was coming from the fear and anxiety circuits that regulate that necessary involuntary change in heart rate and respiratory rate, it also was involuntary and that became valuable as a, as a truth signal as, as social beings. So very interesting when you think about the origins of the human family, the origins of social structures and our ability and need to call for help when there's hope, but, but need at the same time.